Hi, and welcome back to Elden Ring Ultimate Guide. Today is part 32, which is Lake of Rot, which we came here from Noxtella in the last episode. So, we've got a bit of a change up to equipment for this episode. We've got the Beast Repellent Torch, we're wearing the Icon Shield, we've got the Mushroom Set, and we've got the Blessed Dew Talisman, and the Immunizing Horn Charm. That raises your immunity, which gives you more rot resistance. We've got the Health Regen from the Flask, uh, for the Physics Flask. Uh, the Mushroom Set massively increases our Rot Resistance as well. The Blessed Dew Talisman and the Icon Shield gives a little bit of HP regen, which will offset the HP damage, I guess, we take from getting Scarlet Rotted, which is what this big bar is. But luckily, we also have Flame Cleanse Me. Accidentally, I have Flame Grant Me Strength on, and I cast that by mistake. But Flame Cleanse Me will get rid of any Poison and Scarlet Rot. And we highly, 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 highly recommend that you go and get that spell for this area, put on whatever equipment you need in order to cast it, because otherwise this, this place is an absolute fucking nightmare. This first enemy we're going to take on here, um, there's a reason we're fighting this one, and that is because it drops a direct upgrade to the Immunizing Horn Charm in the Immunizing Horn Charm plus one. It gives us a longer window of opportunity between casts of uh, Flame Cleanse Me grabbing this one item over here that's a golden rune and then we're immediately teleporting back to the grace we'll be doing that a couple of times because there's a few items scattered about in the lake of rot but nothing majorly significant except a couple of high level smithing stones like i believe this item right here is smithing stone yeah. eight well it's all pretty pretty good though uh we also you might have noticed before we walked back we we whipped out the uh, Beast Repellent Torch. We've said this a few times, uh, Ioni and Butterfly, whatever, but the Beast Repellent Torch will stop the Basilisks uh, blowing their death cloud at you. It just kind of stops them in their tracks and they become docile, I suppose. So pretty useful, when so you don't have to balance the Rot build up and the Death Blight build up. You can just completely ignore the Death Blight and focus on the Rot. Um, as you can see, the Rot builds up extremely quickly, even with all the... Um, the rot resistance gear that we have equipped it's still just not enough and thus flame cleanse me is extremely extremely important otherwise you have to go out your way to create and or buy um the the rot cure bolus's item which admittedly isn't bad but you're probably going to have to go through like 50 of them otherwise you're just constantly drinking all your uh, crimson flask so it's, it's just it's more of a headache to deal with that than it is to just go get Flame Cleanse Me. This is true, although that does assume you are interested in grabbing all the items in Lake of Rot, and as I've said, there's not a whole lot worth grabbing here. Once we get this item way over in the distance um, that we're on our way to now, one of these is Black Key Bolts, I can't remember which though. Um, but once you've grabbed this item and the couple of others scattered about in the area, you you're really done here you pretty much could just run between all of these buttons you saw us depress one a little a little bit ago and it raised some platforms out of the ground so you could just run from button to button and then this area is basically done there is a boss hidden out in the rot but uh unless you're directly easy. interested in its drop then i i mean i'm an advocate for largely just saying skip to pretty much this whole area to be honest because it is a fucking nightmare to navigate yeah it really really is so i suppose you could just blast through the area use a couple of rot cure boluses and then just kind of be on your merry way you could just do it like that as well but if you are one of these people that uh needs to pick up everything then despite the fact that our method doesn't look that great it is literally <laughs> it's literally the best method because there's nothing that's going to stop that rot build up uh, completely. So you just have to deal with it. And this is the best method for dealing with it. But just stacking all these fucking items. Yeah, we did try to develop a way to have enough health regen that we could just ignore the rot. But unfortunately, at this stage, we didn't have access to either powerful enough regen um, or enough regen sources to be able to simply say no to damage in this area. Yeah, yeah, it just it just simply wasn't happening, which is a shame. So we're sticking on the the we really should have put that the better horn charm on literally immediately, um, but it is what it is. You can do that. You saw us make that small mistake. So now we're about to fight uh, an either an onyx lord or an alabaster lord. 
somehow, inexplicably, this guy actually kills me. Um, again, th these guys aren't difficult for just for whatever reason. Um, yeah, the fucker throws me off the edge, so just kind of watch out for that. <laughs> that one is an alabaster lord, you are right. And the only reason I remember that is because it drops an alabaster lord sword when killed. So what you're going to do is you're going to have Lion's Claw on, and it's going to be even better than Ground Slam. Well, honestly, like, just, just, just be slightly more careful than me. That's these guys are not difficult in the slightest. I think this is the only old man in underwear that kills us in the entire game. Yeah, although to be fair, most enemies don't kill us, so it is a bit of a. It's just it just doesn't really count even saying that, you know. True. I mean, I guess, but a few of them have been bosses. And even that those ones also didn't true. kill us. <laughs> so we picked up a somber nine there. That's quite cool. So if you have a somber weapon, you're I, we, I, we actually might have a somber ancient dragon smith and stone. But if not, very close to fully upgrading the weapon. So that's quite cool. I think so, next on the agenda is heading down this ladder over here, and then just at the bottom of the slope that you can see. Well, we don't take the ladder, but you understand the point. Um, there is a scarab <laughs> hidden out in the rock. Um, yes. This one naturally is a pain in the ass because not only is it in the rock, but it's also surrounded by basilisks. So if you approach it from the scarab side, like you would have if you'd have come off the slope, um, it will lead you into a bunch of basilisks, which is naturally not very fun to deal with. So what we did was use the classic technique of ball side first to get access yep. to that somber stone without having to deal with basilisks. So, as you can see, I mean, the amount of health regen we have is, like, pretty decent when you can, you know, when you've got the Physic Flask and the Talisman and the Shield, but even then, it's still just not even slightly enough to... It, it might offset, like, two or three ticks of Scarlet Rot, but... <laughs> that's at most. And we've got... And also, you need to remember, we've got 60 Vigor, or close to it at the very least. Uh, no, we do have 60 Vigor, and most people do not pump that much into Vigor, so you have even less time to deal with the Scarlet Rot. Um, so, really honestly, just set your set your guy up like this. So we're going to head up this... that's not true. Scarlet Rot deals percentage-based damage. Oh, So it okay, wouldn't matter right. how much Vigor you had, it'd kill you at the same rate. Never mind, then. So we're <laughs> heading up this, uh, this bit of uh, Fallen Ruin. And then we're going to jump over onto this because there's actually the better version of the mushroom set, at least the headpiece anyway. Uh, so we're going to pick that up as well. And that will also give us some more um, immunity, hence rot on, resistance. On top of that, um, the mushroom crown that we just picked up gives you quite a unique effect. It gives you the same effect as the Kindred of Rot's Exaltation in that when you take poison, which you might see in a second... Um, when you get poisoned, you will uh, get a temporary damage buff. You'll see that little red aura around us. That's yeah. because it has the same effect as the Kindred's um, Talisman. So if you stack them and you're on a poison build, you're in business. That's quite cool, actually. I didn't know it had that effect. Not only that, when you cure the Scarlet Rot, you still actually have the buff. So, uh, kind of cool. Yeah. Bonus points if you use a raw meat dumpling to give yourself the weakest poison in the game, and then you don't even have to worry about curing it. <laughs> that's that's really cool. So we're about to do the boss, but we can summon the mimic tier uh, at this stage for the boss. Now the boss is um, one of those dragonkin soldiers. At this stage, very easy for us to defeat with this particular setup. They can be bled, and. Um, yeah, just the jumping L1s is pretty strong, but you do have to you be very careful and like aware of your um, your health. But as you can see, prayerful strike is actually just free for this boss because you mean you don't need to give a shit about the <laughs> about the scarlet rot build up because you can just heal through it completely, and uh, it de it deals decent damage to that the the kindred. So. Uh, sorry, the, dra the Dragon Ken soldier. So, fuck him. He's dead. <laughs> you get the uh, the Dragon Scale Blade. It's a unique katana with a unique version of Lightning Slash as its Ash of War. It has Ice Lightning Slash. 
Um, so similar to the frozen lightning effect from the Dragonkin soldier that we fought in uh, Insel River, it will also build Frostbite up at the same pace that it deals lightning damage, which is pretty nice because if an enemy is vulnerable to Frostbite, they're usually vulnerable to lightning damage as well. It's funny how the game worked out like that. It's quite a cool sounding weapon. Does anybody else think that those Dragonkin soldiers look a hell of a lot like Eva Unit Zero as well? Like, am I missing something there? I swear that's that's what it looks like to me. I wouldn't be surprised if that was the direct in, um, inspiration for them, to be perfectly I, honest. I wouldn't be surprised either. I just The face just looks very similar to me. I don't know. The way it kind of moves, its proportions as well. So... To the left of here is the, uh, I guess, the the progress. Uh, but there's one more item that we need to get. I think it is a cookbook. You are correct. It is a cookbook. Could not tell you which one, so I get half a point. I want to say Nomadic Warriors 19. There's no way you're not frantically Googling this just now. See, I swear I to God. Swear I swear to God, God. See if this is Nomadic Warrior 19. Oh, so close. <laughs> you, get, you get two thirds of a point. That's fine. I'll take my two thirds. You'd be happy with your one third. <laughs> <laughs> no, I get half. Why do you get half? You didn't even guess a number. Fuck you, it's my rules. Guess a name. It's not your rules. <laughs> I made the rules. <laughs> I've been enforcing them this whole guide, bro. You can't suddenly start making the rules now. That's not how this works. So head down the stairs here, we can reach the grace. Now, strictly speaking, and I think it does amount to the same amount of time, you could have came and got the grace and then ran back up, got the cookbook, and then warped back to the grace. But I don't think that would have equated to less time. But anyway, here we go. We've just reset our, our, um, our equipment back to the way it should be. And we're going to swap out the, the scarab. Uh, talisman for the immunizing horn charm just because we're about to fight as an another ulcerated tree spirit except this time it's like surrounded by a bit of rot so we don't we don't want to get caught up in that yeah you're still not dealing out uh, done dealing with rot in the lake of rot go figure yeah um, yeah but we're nearly this done area... this area true true there's not much left um, left to go now, but this area so, is... Hold on, hold on. There is an item at that body. Um, so remember to pick it up. Uh, it's just weird quirk of footage. It just so happened that bit wasn't recorded, but there is an item on that body. I was just about to say this area is littered with these enemies here, the Kindred of Rot. We've fought them multiple times at this stage. Single jumping L1 with Power Stance Great Stars does stance break them, which is nice. And I believe their only significant drop is the Pest's Glaive. Yep, they can drop Faded Earthly Flower and Aeonian Butterflies as well. But also, I'm not yeah. sure if uh, we there was also maybe an item on that body. I'm not sure if we picked it up or not. I wasn't looking at the footage, but there is an item on that body as well. Uh, but yeah, the Great Stars is fantastic against these things. Absolutely fantastic. In fairness, as would any Great Hammer be. I think if you had any two great hammers, uh, That's it would true. stance break them. But the great stars are among the better great hammers. So, so there's also items on the, this, these bodies as well. Again, sorry for quirking the footage, uh, but just remember to pick them up. Be careful of those three tree spirit. It's probably advisable to kill the tree spirit first before picking those items up. But um, yeah, just just given that you have a very small area to fight this one in. Um, just be extremely cautious. Uh, again, other way, like we're just using a storm caller, just to show you that storm caller can be useful, I guess. But um, strictly speaking, I think a flaming strike would have been extremely, extremely useful. Um, what else would be good? Flaming strike or wild strikes plus blood flame blade after you have uh, knocked this thing over. True. Uh, Sad. Stormcaller fills a similar niche, though, in that once you get the stance break on it, just Stormcaller the face, and it will do a shitload of damage. Yeah, this is true. This, this is true. So you could also do Stormcaller plus Bloodflitting Blade as well. That is um, 
also a good option. Really, it's, it is very much dealer's choice. We just tell, like, out of the, we get a golden seed, but out of all the Ashes of War that we have and that you've seen us use, um, we're just kind of giving you a rundown of dealer's choice. This is things that you could use. Probably the easiest method is Flaming Strike. The coolest method is Stormcaller plus Blood Flame Blade. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, uh, so you probably so. actually want to kill all of these things um, as you're running up here because they will just fire that pest threads at you constantly. So if you can't be arsed getting peppered with that, then just kill all of them because clearly it's very easy. But for the sake of time, that's why I didn't. Picked and up the, the Scorpion uh... Stinger Dagger. Um, it's unique in the sense that A, it looks unique, and B, it has um, innate Scarlet Rot buildup, as well as the Repeating Thrust Ash of War. So it's actually not a bad tool for building up Scarlet Rot on an enemy if you have the spare weight to equip it. So you might notice that we can actually enter this uh, coffin without going into the rot river but you can actually enter from the stone platform at the side so you don't actually need to go into the rot cool and a big brained play but we are now on to the boss proper for this area and it is a still natural born of the void now he'll immediately start peppering you with ranged attacks but we're gonna get set up so that we can be peppering him with ranged attacks too or rather, nice. our Mimic tier could be peppering with range attacks because we are going to use the Rot Turret for this boss. Now, put on this exact equipment. Uh, so that's the Royal Remains set, the Blessed Do Talisman, the uh, Dragon Communion Seal, the uh, Icon Shield. And you need to make sure that the only spell that the Mimic tier can feasibly cast is... Um, so it, can, it could cast Flame Cleanse me technically, right? But... The other spell that it should be able to cast only is Rot Breath, and this will force the Mimic tier, once you have the shield and the seal equipped in your right hand, uh, this will force the Mimic tier, and its only attack that it can co that it can actually do is Rot Breath. Now, Rot Breath is fan-fucking-tastic against Astell, because one, Astell can be rotted, but two, Astell is a huge target with a massive hitbox. So this big cone of chip damage that the Mimic Tear is going to fire out of this thing is just going to be peppering the shit out of this thing with damage, and it is extremely, extremely effective. As you saw there as well, something we mentioned in the previous part was we have some aromatic... Um, sorry, perfume aromatics equipped, and the Mimic just used one, and because we stood near it when it used one, we got a free bubble shield, which was nice. Now, the cool thing about having Stormcaller equipped is Stormcaller is fucking amazing against Astell. Um, the problem with Astell is he's kind of at a range that he's like a little bit too high that some weapons are quite annoying to hit him with. As you can see, Rot Breath doing exactly what it needs to do here. Uh, but the Jumping L1s are fantastic. But yeah, Stormcaller is great because you just create a big circular hitbox around you. You don't need to be accurate. You can just mash L2 and get damage in that way. So that's ultimately why we picked Stormcaller for the Ulcerated Tree Spirit, because it means that we don't need to um, change it or Ash of War. So it was like a, just a time saver. But ultimately, yeah, not only that, the Icon Shield is actually pretty decent against um, surviving a bunch of this guy's hits. So yeah, this is a fantastic setup for killing this thing. It, it really, really is. I, I just On can't believe. On top of that as well, the fact that we didn't have to swap out of the Royal Remains set, because it actually has very decent defenses. It gives you that HP regen once you get low. It's just all around. Like, these setups together, so Rot Turret plus us using the Stormcaller, it meant that Estelle really had no options. He was just stuck taking damage the whole time. Yeah, because Estelle also is, like, annoyingly difficult to hit. Like I said, he's, like, he does the height thing, but he also moves about in a weird way. Um, I, personally, I found trying to uh, hit Estelle to be a massive pain in the ass. But we are now warping back to Renala, and we now have the discarded palace key. So we can now use the Dark Moon Ring that we get from there. And now we need the Dark Moon Ring that we get from that chest to unlock uh, this, uh, this doorway here. 
Yeah, there would have been a big blue seal in the doorway. You'd have no doubt seen it in the footage. And um, we got the discarded palace key by defeating the Baleful Shadow, which we did in the Noxtella episode. So go check that out if you're wondering where we got it. Um, the palace key opens the chest, the ring removes the seal, and that gives us direct access to the Moonlight Altar, which will be the next part. Yeah, and that will be where we finish Rani's quest. And also show you the greatest strategy fucking ever. So yeah, now we are back to um, our base equipment. We put more into mind. I know we said that we can start dumping into strength, but actually we need to put some more into mind. We need to have more mind in order to be able to summon Tish, the spirit ash that we get from the next part. And it's very fucking good. And okay, there we go, that's Lake of Rot done. Join us in part 33, where we're going to be doing Moonlight Altar and Rani. Now, other than liking and subscribing, you can follow us on Twitter. You can also follow us on Twitch, where we will be streaming once the DLC is out. And if you're feeling especially generous, you can sling us some cash on Patreon if you're so inclined. But the best thing you can do is just comment anything. Just comment anything. Go on. Anything. Two seconds. Go on. Anyway, catch you in the next part.